He's risen. Uh, I'm so glad to be able to worship you with you, Chapel Hill Baptist Church, this morning. Even though we cannot be in church, we still gather around our televisions to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so if you have your Bibles with you this morning, I want you to take them and turn to a passage of Scripture that, uh, uh, that really... Uh, doesn't speak of Easter Sunday, but yet it's what Easter Sunday is all about. And so turn with me, if you will, to uh, uh, the second uh, letter of Timothy, Paul's second letter to Timothy, Timothy 2, uh, 2 Timothy, and we're going to be looking at chapter 1 and verse 8 and following. And so uh, 2 Timothy uh, chapter 1, verse 8 and following. And listen to what uh, Paul writes to us. He says, Therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the suffering for the gospel according to the power of God. Notice this, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began but has now been revealed by the appearing of the Savior, <clears throat> Jesus Christ, <clears throat> who has abolished death <clears throat> and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, to which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. And then one other verse in chapter 2 and verse 8, uh, the apostle Paul uh, 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 writes, um, he says, Remember that, Je that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. This is the word of the Lord. Let's pray together. Lord, even as we have read this portion of your word, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the reason by which we gather and which is our hope both for now and for all of eternity. And I pray that on this Easter Sunday morning that you would bless the reading of this word and that the words of my mouth, the meditation of my own heart would be found acceptable in your sight. My rock and my redeemer, I pray in Jesus' blessed name. Amen. I don't think I have to tell anyone uh, that's uh, watching this morning that uh, over the last few weeks, I mean, all we've been hearing is bad news. I mean, every day that we turn on the television, I mean, all we hear about uh, due to the coronavirus pandemic is how many more people have been hospitalized and how the number of deaths are rising. And not to mention the countless millions of people who are suffering and the pain and the disappointment and the hurt it has brought to countless millions of people. And all of this due to the coronavirus pandemic. But this morning as we gather together in front of our television. I mean, we're not going to be hearing bad news this morning, but on this Easter Sunday morning, 2020, we come together around our television, uh, not to hear bad news, but to hear good news, to hear the news of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who died, who was buried, and who was raised from the dead, and who has conquered uh, sin, death, and the grave. And my friends, that's not bad news we're hearing on television this morning. That's the best news that could ever be heard. And from these verses of Scripture that we have read from the Apostle Paul as he was writing to Timothy this morning, this is the best news that could ever be heard for three reasons that Paul gives to us here in the Scripture. And it's all because of that resurrection of Jesus from the dead. First of all, this is the best news that could ever be heard because Paul is telling us here it's the best news because it tells us that sinners can be saved. Sinners can be saved. 
You know, Paul also writes in um, 1 Timothy chapter uh, 2 and verse 5, where he says that there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Jesus Christ, who gave his life as a ransom for all to be testified to in due time. You see, that's the best news that could ever be heard. Now in that verse, when Paul says that Jesus gave his life as a ransom for all, now that word ransom means the price that was to be paid to set a slave free. That's what ransom meant. The price that was paid to set a slave free. And folks, the Bible makes it perfectly clear that every one of us was born into this world slaves to the devil through the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. But you see, the good news is simply this. God the Father sent His only begotten Son into this world to pay the ransom price through His suffering and death upon the cross to set us free. And my friend, when we receive Jesus into our life as our Lord and Savior, we are free indeed. Sin, death, and the grave no longer has its hold upon us because death has been swallowed up in victory through the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And folks, it doesn't get any better than that. And I want you to notice what Paul says, if you will, in verse 9 of Jesus. He says, who saved us and who has called us with a holy calling. Do you realize that every time I stand here and preach uh, the gospel, and every time you witness to a lost person, do you realize that that's God's way? of calling people out to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. And my friend, it doesn't get any better than that. It's a holy calling that God gives to us. And not only that, but He also tells us that this holy calling was, calling was given to us uh, before the foundation of the world. That is, before time ever began before God ever created this world and placed man in this world, God knew that we would sin and become sinners. But even then, God was determined to save sinners. And for that reason, God in advance had planned to send His only begotten Son into this world to pay the ransom price, to pay a debt that He did not owe, to save us from a debt that we could never pay. And then why would God go to so great of a cost to save us from hell and to bring us to heaven so that we could spend eternity with Him? Well, let me just tell you this. The reason for that action does not lie in us, but it lay with Him in his heart of love. You see, Jesus had rather die than spend eternity without us. No, I can't tell you really the reason uh, why he did what he did, but I'm so glad that he did it. Aren't you? I'm so glad that he did it. And it has nothing to do with what we have done, but it has everything to do with what he has done for us. And my friend, if you're listening to me and you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want you to know that God is calling you out. He's calling you out to believe in the Lord Jesus so that you will be saved. You see, that's exactly why Jesus stretched his arms wide across that cross. And that's why he suffered, and that's why he bled, and that's why he died, so that you could believe in him and be saved. And that's why this is the best news that could ever be heard, that sinners can be saved through the death, burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I can only tell you that he did what he did because He loved us, and He loved us, because He loves us, and He always will. And friends, it doesn't get any better than that. But not only that, Paul tells us that this is the best news that could ever be heard, not only because uh, 
sinners can be saved. But he goes on in this passage to tell us that sinners can be saved because death has been defeated. You know, if there's any one thing that the coronavirus pandemic reminds us of, it's the reality, the cold reality that people die. That people die. And you know, some people die in even stranger ways. I mean, I read about a woman who died while making a phone call on a busy street corner in New York City. As she was making this phone call, suddenly she was struck and killed by a flower pot that had been knocked off an eight-foot window ledger having been struck by lightning. Now that's a strange way to die. But let me tell you one that's even stranger. There was a man by the name of Carlos Bombas who was actually fishing in a small boat in the Philippines. And he opened his mouth to yawn. And when he did, a fish jumped out of the water and landed in his mouth and got stuck there. Now that may sound funny to you, but it wasn't funny to Carlos because he choked to death before anyone could get to him and pull that fish out of his mouth. Now, people die in strange ways. But I'm telling you, my friend, people die. Do you realize that every time the clock ticks, someone dies in this world? And if the Lord tarries, delays his coming, I can promise you that one of the ticks on that clock has your name on it, and it has my name on it. You see, death is a fact. Death is our foe. But the reason why we gather here today is because I've got good news for you, that while death is a fact and death is our foe, death thinks that it can keep us when we die, but it can't. And the reason why it can't keep us because when Jesus suffered and bled and died on that cross and they took his body down dead and buried him in that borrowed tomb, you know, when they did that, old King Death, he laid his bony, icy fingers on the dead body of Jesus. And he let out a horse's laugh, saying, I have him. He's mine. And I'm going to keep him. As the dead body of Jesus lay there, cold and still, in that sealed tomb. But on that Third day, the dead body of Jesus began to stir. And Jesus was raised up alive. And do you know what he did? I love this. He took that napkin that they had placed over his dead face and he folded it. And he neatly lighted it down, laid it down in that place. And then he walked out of the grave. And do you know why that he did that? Because he knew that when his disciples came and they would see that that tomb was empty, they would look inside and they would see that napkin that had been placed over his dead face had been removed and had been neatly folded. And when they would see that, they would knew, they would know that the reason that tomb was empty is because Jesus had walked out of that tomb alive and that death had been defeated. And my friend, there's no better news than that, that even though death is our foe, death has been defeated. Do you know that Paul Asinger is a professional golfer? And uh, 
I think, believe that in 1993 that he won the PGA Championship. And Paul Asinger is a cancer survivor, and he would talk openly about his bout with cancer. And he said this about his cancer. He said that when he had this bout with his cancer, he had won a lot of victories playing golf. He had won a lot of tournaments. He had made a lot of money. But he said that when he came down with cancer, he came to have a new perspective on life. He said all the money that he had earned on the PGA Tour, he said all of his success and all of that happiness was only temporary. And he said he came to know through his bout with cancer that the only thing that would give him real peace and contentment in life was through having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And then Paul Ainsinger went on to say, he says, I'm not telling you I no longer have any problems or nothing else bothers me, but I can tell you this, he says, I have learned the answer. I know the answer for the six-foot hole. And let me tell you, my friend, death has been defeated. And even if we die, we don't have to be afraid of being put in that hole because Jesus Christ is the answer for the six-foot hole. Death has been defeated. Uh, you know, they, they tell me that a possum is a smart animal. Now, I don't think of a possum being very smart. I mean, usually the only time you'll ever see a possum is a dead one on the middle of the road. But they say that a possum is smart because they say that a possum... Uh, will not go into a hole where there's only one set of tracks. But if that, because that possum knows that there's something inside that hole if there's only one set of tracks. But if that possum, see, possum sees that there's two sets of tracks, he'll go in that hole because he knows that there's nothing inside that hole. And I want you to know this, my dear friend. When you go to the tomb where they had placed the dead body of Jesus and buried him there, outside that tomb, there's two sets of tracks. One set leads into the tomb, and the other set leads out of the tomb. Why? Because Jesus has defeated death. And one day, my friend, not only was he raised from the dead, but we have the promise of our own resurrection from the dead. And that's why the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15 and uh, verse 55 where he says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who has given us the victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why Easter is the greatest news that could ever be heard. It tells us that sinners can be saved. It tells us that sinners can be saved because death has been defeated. But there's one other reason why it's the best news that could ever be heard. It tells us that Jesus is the way. I want you to notice what he says in verse 9 of the scripture that we have read. Or verse 12, excuse me. He says this in verse 12. He says, I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed to him until that day. And if you'll notice, that word day is capitalized. And that's for, because it's not, he's not referring to just any day, but he's talking about the day, the day, when we're all going to be raised up and Jesus is going to judge the living and the dead. But Paul wasn't worried about that day because he knew he had committed his all and the keeping of his soul to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he knew that that wasn't going to be for him a bad day. That was going to be a joyful day, the best day yet. And the same thing can be true for you and me on that day if we've truly committed our all to Him. So I ask you, have you committed your all to Him? And if not to Him, who have you committed your all to? You know, when I was a boy growing up, 
one of my favorite shows on television was uh, uh, the Alfred Hitchcock Presents. Alfred Hitchcock Presents series. And uh, I would watch it on a black and white television. And I can remember uh, all those different episodes. And there was one particular episode on Alfred Hitchcock Presents where a woman had killed her husband and she was arrested and she was tried and she was sentenced to spend the rest of her life in prison for killing her husband. But she was bound and determined that even if she went to prison, she wasn't going to stay there, that somehow, some way, she would find some way to be able to escape and break out of prison. And as she was on the prison bus, on the way to spend the rest of her life in prison, she kept telling herself, somehow, some way, I'll find some way to escape from this prison. And as that prison bus stopped in front of the gates of that prison, she looked out of the window of that bus, and she looked over and she saw this old man who was digging a grave in the prison cemetery that was located right outside the walls of that prison. And she said to herself, I've got my plan. I know exactly how I'm going to escape. So as soon as she got into that prison, she made sure that she came to know the man who was responsible for burying the inmates who had died in that prison. He was an old man who was almost blind and he couldn't hardly see because he had cataracts. And she became his friend and uh, she convinced him that he needed to help her to escape prison and that if he would help her to escape, that she would send him money so that he could have a cataract operation so that he could see again. And so that's what they planned to do. And this is what happened. Whenever the prison bell would toll at night, that meant that another inmate in that prison had died. And one night, the prison bell tolled. And when it did, she knew that another inmate had died and that the old man would be in the wood shop and that he would be building that casket to put that corpse of that dead inmate inside that casket. And she waited until finally she knew that the casket had, had been built and uh, had been made and that the old man had placed that dead corpse of that dead inmate inside that casket. And she managed to go over to the workshop and it was late at night and it was dark. And she felt her way around not being able to see. And she finally came upon the casket and she managed to uh, lift the lid of that casket. And of all things, she crawled inside that casket with that dead inmate inside that casket with her and she closed the lid and she laid there still and quiet. And this was going to be her way of escape. And she waited until she could uh, hear and feel that casket that she was lying in with that dead inmate being wheeled outside that prison to be buried. And she could hardly contain her excitement of knowing that she was going to be escaping from that prison. And when they... Uh, And then when they got the casket to the place where she was to be buried with that dead inmate, she could feel them lowering her at that casket she was in into the ground. And then she could hear the dirt being shoveled and thrown on top of the lid of that casket. And finally, it got quiet and she couldn't hear anything. And that she knew then that she had been buried alive with that dead inmate inside that casket. And she couldn't wait for the old man to come out and dig up that grave to let her out of that casket so that she could go free. And so she just kept lying there inside that 
casket in pitch dark. And she began to wonder. The minutes have turned into hours. And why hasn't the old man come out and dug up this grave and got me out of this casket so I can go free? And she continued to wait and she continued to wait. And she knew that she didn't have much air left in that casket. And she said, where's the old man? Why hasn't he come out? Why hasn't he dug up the grave? Why hasn't he let me out of this casket so that I can go free? And so finally, out of desperation, she reached into her pocket and she pulled out a match and she lit it so that she could check the time. And of all things, she glanced over at that dead inmate only to discover that it was the old man. That it was the old man. And her hope of escape was buried with her in that casket. You know, she had put her hope in a human being She thought who would be able to set her free. But that old man died and went to his grave and took her with him. Now don't miss what I'm about to say. Do you realize that every religious leader who has ever lived has died and their body is motoring in the grave, except for one. Where's Confucius? In the grave. Where's Buddha? In the grave. Where's Mohammed? In the grave. But there's one who is not in the grave. His tomb is empty. He arose from the dead. For you see, the Lord Jesus Christ is the only one who has the power to be able to escape death. And my friend, as I've said, if the Lord tarries and delays is coming, death is coming. And who are you placing your faith in to overcome the grave? Jesus Christ is the only one who can help you to escape death. Why? Because He's the only one who can forgive your sin. And He can forgive your sin because He died for your sin and He rose from the dead on the third day so that you might be saved. But listen, friend. If you're placing your trust in any other cause, in any other person than the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll be making the same mistake that that woman made in that casket. Don't let that happen to you. If you're listening to me this morning and you've never received Jesus into your life as your Lord and Savior, on this Easter Sunday morning, as I pray this prayer out loud, I want you to bow your heads, your head, and I want you to pray this prayer with me silently. Repeat these words after me. And mean them with your heart. And Jesus Christ will come into your life. Oh, He'll forgive you. He'll save you. And He'll give you eternal life. And that can be yours. If only you'll receive Him. Pray with me. Dear Lord Jesus. That's right. Say that to God. Mean it with your heart. Dear Lord Jesus. I know I'm a sinner. I know I deserve to die. But I know you love me enough to die for me. And I believe you were raised from the dead for me.
And as best as I know how, I ask you to come into my heart. Forgive me. Save me. And from this day forward, transform me into the person you would have me to be. Thank you for forgiving me. And thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer and you meant it with your heart, and I believe you did or you wouldn't have prayed it, my friend, you made life's most important decision. Now you need to know what it is to follow Jesus now that you've received him as your Savior and your Lord. And you will notice that there's a number that you can call. And there are ministers at uh, Chapel Hill Baptist Church who would love to receive your call and who would love to pray with you and encourage you and help you to begin to grow in your walk with the Lord. And so if you prayed and asked Christ into your life, before this day is over, I hope you'll let someone know that you've asked Jesus into your heart. And if you need someone to love you, to encourage you, and to help you along the way, call that number, and one of the ministers at the church will be in touch with you. God bless you. And church, we're looking forward to the time when we're going to meet together again. Thank you for listening.